BJ from Board Game World. I've got Ryan here, who's the designer of Pirates of Maracaibo. And hey, it's a board game show. What does that mean, Steve? It means we got to play a game. We got to play a board game. So tonight, because we had to kind of cut it short a little bit tonight, um, make sure he still has enough battery to finish the show, Steve. We decided we'd do the <laughs> yes. Envy game. You want, to, you want to tell Ryan how it's played? Sure. So the gist of the Envy game is that you get to know something we don't. we got to try and figure it out. It's kind of like board game 20 questions. You think of the game that if you had the perfect setup, the time that you wanted, the people ready, everything's ready to roll. And you've got a copy of the game. It might be like, you know, a grail game that you don't have, but you're dying to, dying to have. If everything was right, what was the game that you drop everything and play right now? Don't tell us. We're going to have to try and figure it out by asking you, you know, short answer or yes, no questions if we're going to be as, as uh, you know, close to 20 questions as possible. We'll take turns asking questions. I don't know who we've got in chat to maybe to guess along. If there's nobody guessing along, it's just going to be a race between me and BJ to see if you don't stump us. And if there's a tie? Steve wins. If there's a tie, there's a simple rule. BJ always loses. <laughs> BJ always loses. That's right. Yeah. All right. So you feel like you have the uh, rules of the game there, Ryan? Yep. I think I can handle that. All right. Good. You so got something first, in mind? <clears throat> I, I got a game in mind. First All question right. I always ask is whether it's competitive or cooperative. And I'm going to guess it's a competitive game. Definitely competitive. Yep. Okay. okay. Steve, your turn. Mm -hmm. I got to try and think about this in a way that's going to narrow things. Well, it's that narrows it down to about 135,000 games. So it would have narrowed it down more if he said cooperative. You <laughs> would have. <laughs> yeah. Um, has it been put out in the last, say, five or so years? It has not. It's oh, not. it's an older game. A oh, little bit older game. Does it okay. have miniatures? No. No. I kind of knew that one there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Based on our conversation here, I wasn't expecting managers. Mm -hmm. Is it a game that would be something that you think of as playable in less than an hour? Oh, the old one-hour wonder? The one-hour uh, wonder that BJ talks about. I would say it's not likely to be played in under an hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so, for, so good clarification. For a first play, you're not going to get this thing under an hour, right? Nope. No. Yeah. No. And Isn't you may not have a shot if you've if you've played it <laughs> as well, uh, but it's it's probably over. But maybe not by the time. It's not a marathon, but it's it's definitely over an hour. Okay. Okay. Does it have a European designer? Yes, it does. Ooh, we kind of knew that though, right, Steve? Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> kind of figured. Yep, kind of figured. Um. So to recap for the uh, chat crew, we've got a competitive game. Designed yep. by at least one European, it's going to take over sixty minutes for your first play, and it has no older minutes. than older than five years oh, and older than five years. Yeah. Okay. Um, was it something that we would have recognized as being an award winner or a nominee? Oh, that's a great one. Great question. Uh, award winning. I don't think it won any awards that I know of. Okay. But it, I would say it would be like if you looked at a list of Oscar winner or Oscars that the best movie not to win an Oscar. You know what I'm trying to say here? Yeah. 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 Should have been nominated, okay. was overlooked. It, it was, I would say, criminally overlooked. Criminally overlooked. Okay. All right. Oh, man. That's interesting. Um, Oh, Steve. So we got it's older okay. than five years. Uh, Let's just I'm, say if they if they redid the voting, it would have gone a different way. Okay, so it's something that has grown on the gaming world, perhaps. Would, and they would, real, they've they've realized their mistake. I, I think so. Yes. Oh man, it sounds like he's describing Concordia. Was it Concordia? That is correct. Whoa! Oh, yes. man. 2014, it it did not win. It lost to um, Istanbul. Istanbul, yep. And, with, and it's criminally look. I've played both games, and Istanbul is a fine game. Not, I'm not I'm not dogging it, but I mean, it's a better game. Yeah, yep. It's a better game. It should have won though. It yeah. should have won the. Uh, yeah. That was the. You was at the Kinner that year. I think it was the Kinner Spiel. Yeah, it mm -hmm. should have won the Kinner Spiel. Yep. 
When he's when he said currently overrated and it, and if the votes were counted today, it would have won. <laughs> yeah, that's where I kind of thought yeah. Concordia. Are you a big fan of Concordia? Yeah, it's it's my wife and I's favorite. We we played. Dozens. You can ask Steve. My yep. my for, for many years was my favorite game of all time, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I like Beyond the Sun a little better now. But uh, given the choice, I mean, it would be tough to pick. It's yep. definitely top five for me. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah. top yeah. five, maybe three. Great. Yeah, Castles of Burgundy is the only one that came from you know from way down to where Steve, you and I played it so much together. We probably what are we knocking on seventy or eighty plays? Wow. Yeah, oh, at least, at least. And if yeah. we had a way to do it better online with Concordia, I mean, now that we, Steam is there, but we had a, uh, we at least had Boite de Jeux where we could be playing that on a regular basis online, and then mm -hmm. that seems to have fallen apart, unfortunately. Kelly Jean checking in. Kelly, we had an issue with Facebook at the start, so uh, unfortunately, which is where most of the viewers come in, is from uh, Facebook. So yeah, I guess the uh, the chat crew wasn't big, wasn't a big one tonight, but that's okay. We're going to post this up to YouTube and, and, and let people find out all about Pirates of Maracaibo. But the big winner tonight, BJ finally wins an Envy game. It's probably been years since I've beaten Steve or the chat crew with Concordia, yeah. a fantastic choice. Well, BJ, you know beating me is not an accomplishment. The reason that you you also hard to you know, lose to the chat group when there isn't one. So the yeah. Gumbo Overlord. <laughs> Good shot. The Gumbo <laughs> Overlord was not here. Verla would have been in on, with you on Concordia. Concordia was coming for me in the next guess. You beat me to it. So the DJ Bell's at Gen Con right now, and and uh, <laughs> the Gumbo Overlord had something else to do. So you had you had you just had me and Steve tonight, and that gives me a fighting chance at winning. Fighting yep. chance yep. at winning. What I is it that makes Concordia so good for you? I, I hold my own with Castles of Burgundy with you. It's pretty, we have some pretty good. No, metaphors. no, no. You better than hold your own. You better than hold your own. But to tell tell us, um, you know, Ryan, what is it that makes Concordia so fabulous for you? What is it that really makes it? We agree with you, but tell tell the rest of the world that's gotten that's maybe missed out still. What are they missing out on? Well, what I think it does best is is it has incredible depth with very little complexity. Mm -hmm. So. You can teach the game in a matter of minutes by saying, play a card and do what it says. You know, it's just that simple. The the architect, you can move your, move your, uh, what are they called? Uh, I forget the name. Your traders. Your, uh, um, colonists. 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 Right. Move your colonists and, and build on uh, adjacent cities. And, you know, when you're teaching someone, it, it sounds so simple, but man. You can you can really plan out. I can do this this turn, this the next turn, this the following turn. Slap down four cities and away I go. And it's it's I just love the I love the forward planning of it. But I also love oh my opponent just did this. I need to shift gears and do something else very quickly. And mm -hmm. it has it has both. Uh, in my opinion, it has both. Uh, um, a long-term strategy and a little bit of tactics in it as well. Agreed. Agreed. Yep. Tactics and, and strategy in the same game. Yep. <clears throat> and you won't be overwhelmed with choices because the choices are what you can hold in your hand. Yep. The you choices know. dwindle until you have to say, well, it's time for me to wrap them back up again and recollect. I exactly. still remember the first time playing it with my son, Jack, at, uh, at Dice Arcon 2017. I still remember that game to this day because I remember looking at Jack about halfway through uh, the guy that taught it to us, Max, had said, we're going to do this thing. You don't have to do this again. We're going to do the scoring about halfway through yes. just so you can understand the scoring because you're not going to understand it. I just want you to play the cards. Don't mm -hmm. worry about the final score. We'll figure mm -hmm. that out at the halfway point. And then after that, I want you to you know, try to play, which was brilliant because that's exactly what we did. And I remember looking at Jack going, wow, this might be one of the most elegant big games I've ever played. I mean, I played elegant mm -hmm. small games, but yes. this one felt like a small game in a big package. And yet it was so intuitive. And so maybe the Mercator card is maybe the, if I remember right, that's the name of it. Yep. It might be the hardest one. The trading mm -hmm. aspect, people sometimes struggle, but everything mm -hmm. else people get right away. You know, yep. mm -hmm. you're right. Except for, except for the scoring, the idea of there is set collection and scoring based on different, you know, what the, what the card is linked to on the board. Right. But once people wrap their heads around that, there's no going back. People play, they're, they're, people that come from blood rage. Or thinking, well, I, I, I've got pieces all over the board. I should be in first. Why am I in last place? Because mm -hmm. you didn't buy a single card the whole game. <laughs> You're yep. not going to win. You know, yep. you, yeah. 
you didn't score any points. It's that it's that trying to build your engine and then you got to run the engine and start buying some cards that match up mm -hmm. to what the, the engine they built. Oh, I love it. Also, Steve, one of the greatest things is the fact that uh, the system itself is so expandable. And, and yes. that, that's just a brilliant thing. It's like Ticket to Ride. One of the, well, I think one of the reasons why everybody likes Ticket to Ride so much, even though you don't get all the other ones, you like the idea that there are so many maps out there. Memoir right. 44, same way. That's why I got so into Memoir 44, because there were so many maps out there. Well, the same thing with Concordia. I mean, yep. when he, every time he comes out with a new map, I just want to get it and try what's that little tweak that he's uh -huh. throwing right. in this time. Tight yeah. maps, sprawling maps, waterways in Germany, you know, yep. you know fish in Crete, I think. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. There's always there's always a nice little wrinkle forum in there. Tiles. And, yeah, I love, I it's love the forum tiles. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. We, we always play with the forum tiles. We like yep. those. Forum tiles and the and salsa, say, sure, salsa, yeah. Oh. Forum tiles and salsa, definitely want to yep. throw that in. All right, well, that is an excellent choice, Concordia. Steve and I both approve. That's the Envy game presented by our friends at Game Toppers LLC. Don't forget, make your game nights a showstopper when you play on a Game Topper. And Steve, they've got that Kickstarter 4.5 going on right now. Berkey's got they all kinds of specials. He's got those beautiful looking rails. He's got the brand new terrain mats, and he's got a bunch of new mats out there, plus a bunch of specials. If you want to get a full game topper system for about 50% off, this is your chance to do it right there in the Kickstarter. So make sure you go check that out. All right, board gamers, that's it for another episode of Gumbo Live. I want to thank my guest, Ryan Hendrickson, all the way from Iowa via Toronto, mm -hmm. the designer of Pirates of Maracaibo. Thank you for taking time to come out and uh, and, and chat with me and Steve. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a lot of fun. If people...